So here's the colored counter method in what we call the sea of zeros. And the basic idea behind colored counters is this. You have a counter that represents negatives, and in this case it's the white squares with the little negatives going across them. And you have a counter that represents positives, so the black one represents a positive one. So when you add a negative one and a positive one, that gives you zero, which means that all of these here, these paired ones and negative ones, are really zeros. So what we have right now is a sea of zeros, and so this represents zero on the board. So I'm going to start by showing you a really basic problem. Uh, 3 plus 1. So to do 3 plus 1, and we're not going to borrow from the sea of zeros until we get to subtraction, but it's good to have it here from the start so that you've got everything set up nicely. So if I want to show 3 plus 1, I would show 1, 2, 3, and then 1 over here. So 3 plus 1, scoot them together, and we have a total of 4 in a sea of zeros. So overall this is equal to 4. That's probably no big surprise. So now let's switch to sign numbers. So now let's do negative 2 plus 5. So we start with negative 2 represented by two whites, and then 5, which comes from 5 blacks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And of course, any time when we scooch them together, any time we have a pair of negative 1 and positive 1, this just becomes a 0. So that becomes a 0 and that becomes a 0. I'm just going to move them into my sea of zeros here. And so my answer here is 3 blacks, which is going to be positive 3. Likewise, we'll reset here, so we're back to our sea of zeros. Likewise, we can do something like negative 5 plus 3. So then I'd start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 negatives. There's my negative 5. I need to add to that 1, 2, 3 positives. And so again, I can make some zeros out of this. There's a 0 right there. There's a 0 right there. There's a 0 right there. And so what I'm left over with is negative 2 in a sea of zeros. So I've got negative 2. Okay. We can also do problems. I'm going to clear out some of my zeros here so I have some working space. So I'm back down to a sea of zeros and we can do problems that show negatives plus negatives. Um, this turns out to be just as easy as positives plus positives and is a really nice conceptual way for students to understand this, ad this addition. So here's a negative 2 and a negative 3 and if I scooch them together there's no zeros created by that and so my answer here would be negative 5. Okay, This brings us to the subtraction, which is actually the harder concept, but once you have the sea of zeros here, you've probably been wondering what the sea of zeros is all about. Once we have that, it's a lot easier to do subtraction. So we'll start with a simple subtraction just to make sure we understand the concept here. With addition, we're always putting in. With subtraction, we're going to take out. We're going to start with 6. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And so whenever we have a subtraction, it's a take away. So I have 6 here, and I'm going to take away positive 2, which leaves me with 4. And so all is well and good. We have 4. Easy enough. Until you have too much to take away. So let's say that we have 3 minus 5. So I'm going to start with 3 black counters. And now I need to take away 5. But the problem, of course, is that I don't have 5 here to take away. Ah, but wait. Remember the sea of zeros here? I can take away five positives. One, two, three, four, five. I'll just pull from that sea of zeros. And what that leaves me with is a new set of unpaired negatives. And so my answer here is negative two. Okay, before you start another problem, make sure you reset. You might want to replace a couple of these missing zeros that we just took away. So here's a couple more zeros in our little C. So we reset, we're all at zero now, and we can do something like negative three minus four. So we'd start this with negative three. So here's negative three. And now I need to subtract four. So I'm taking away positive four. So I take away positive four. You notice there isn't positive four to take away here, but there sure is positive four to take away in my C of zero. So I'll take away one, two, three, four positives. And if I scooch these all together now, we can see that what I have left here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 negatives. So that makes a negative 7. And let's just look at one more. The hardest problem of all for students to conceptualize, a problem like uh, negative 3 minus negative 1. And we can talk about this being an opposite, opposite, and all sorts of other things, but this concept still works with colored counters in a sea of zeros. 
So let's say that we start with negative 3. We want to subtract negative 1. So I'm just going to pull away negative 1. I don't even need to use my C of zeros because I already had negative 3 here. And so my answer is just the negative 2 here that's left over. All right. So the trick here is that when you have addition, you're always putting stuff in. And when you have subtraction, that second number actually gets taken away. And so you just need to make sure you take away from the C of zeros when necessary. So hopefully that makes sense to you, and you'll start to see that colored counters can be much easier if you do color counters in a C of zeros.